So let's talk about um, the extraocular muscles and their motor neurons. Start with the, the muscles. If we have a person looking straight ahead, this is, uh, so this is the neutral position of the eyes, looking straight ahead. And in that situation, the, there is activity in uh, both the left and the right lateral rectus and the left and the right medial rectus. Okay, so there's balanced activity in both lateral recti, both medial recti. So uh, this is really different from, if, if, I, if I'm at rest, if my biceps is completely at rest, there's no activity in, in the motor neurons. These are the motor neurons and they're driving a constant excitation of the, of the, uh, of the muscles. Um, so it's really different for the extraocular muscles than any other skeletal muscles. Um, but now let's say that I look all the way to the left. And in order to do that, I have to contract my left lateral rectus and my right medial rectus. And to enable these two to pull the, the orbit, I also am best served if I uh, inhibit, if I silence my left medial rectus and my right lateral rectus. And so this is, the, it, this is a schematic of a uh, firing pattern that would accompany a far uh, left, uh, leftward gaze. So ex um, as excited as it can be in the left and re lateral rectus and right medial rectus and relaxation of the other two muscles. Now what about a position in between? So for a position in between, uh, there's increased activity in the, in the agonist muscles, the muscles that are pulling the eye leftward, but there's not a silencing of the other uh, uh, motor neurons and their innervated muscles. And so this is a much more balanced uh, um, uh, activity across the muscles. And the bottom line is that in order to maintain any position, there has to be the supporting motor neuron discharge. So we have to, we create our, it, uh, our, our eye position. We create it with active activity in the motor neurons that are innervating the muscles. There are some other differences between uh, motor neurons and uh, both the motor neurons and the extraocular muscles and their body equivalents. So let's just say the biceps for, for, for one. Um, there's some, some of these are, are uh, anatomical. So for example, extraocular muscles, some of them are multiply innervated. They're innervated in more than one spot by a motor neuron. Um, and then there are, there are some just differences in there that are reflected in different susceptibilities to different types of diseases. And one, uh, there, there are two that we'll talk about. One is their susceptibility to autoimmune diseases. So the orbit seems to be an autoimmune, uh, ha have a different immunity uh, situation than the rest of the body. So in fact, autoimmune disorders will oftentimes start in the orbit. One example of that is myasthenia gravis. That's probably the best known example of that. Myasthenia gravis, there is a, um, an autoimmune, autoimmune reaction to the neuromuscular junction, either to acetylcholine receptors or to the um, to the factor that concentrates acetylcholine receptors at the at the end plate, um, so so that uh, is is attacked and it often starts in the eyes and the consequence of that will be both uh, diplopia, so double vision, and also ptosis, so a droopy eye eye eyelid because the levator palpebrae is also um, affected. The other, the other uh, difference that is important clinically is, is that these are different, they're, they're really not quite skeletal muscles and they're not quite motor neurons. Um, and one place that we see this very dramatically is in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. In a, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, both the motor neurons and the upper motor control centers, so motor cortex cells, connected pairs, motor cortex to, to motor neurons, those pairs both die. 
in, uh, but in ALS, uh, extraocular motor neurons do not die. They're just not, they don't die in ALS, and nor do their parent, their bossy neurons that are in, instead of in the motor cortex, they're in the frontal eye fields. So those frontal eye field mo um, neurons that innervate motor neurons that go to the extraocular muscles, those frontal eye field uh, neurons also don't die. So there are some important differences. Um, and, and one final difference in, in the, um, it, let's say in the hand or in the legs, muscles are pretty much built to either be really fast or to stay contracted for a long time. So they're either slow fiber muscles or fast fiber muscles. The slow ones that are in, say, the, the soleus muscle allow you to, to stay upright for a long, long, long time. But the fast ones allow you to make very fast uh, ballistic movements but can't stay engaged for a long time. The extraocular muscles have a little bit of both. You can move your eyes extremely fast, as, as I suggested with the saccades, which are up to 350 degrees per second. Um, and you can also hold an eccentric gaze for a long, long time. And it, holding the eccentric gaze uh, requires that you in, stay, you, you, that you keep a muscle contracted for a long, long time. Okay, so now we're gonna look uh, we're going to move on from the extraocular muscles and we're going to take the first look at the gaze control centers.